everybody. So, has anybody here ever had a drink to forget? Or perhaps they've used alcohol as a means of coping with a stressful situation? Well, you wouldn't be alone. I think we're all likely to have a little bit more to drink when we've uh, experienced something horrible. But this is even more true after particularly distressing events, traumatic events. Um, whilst this can take a toll over time, if we keep drinking alcohol during these periods, it affects how we think over time, causing us to be more likely to develop serious mental health problems. Though these problems are very common, unfortunately, they're very difficult to treat, often accompanied by very high rates of uh, relapse and very poor prognoses. What I'm here to do today is to offer a complementary solution to the current treatments, one way the community can get more involved with helping people and acknowledge the root problems behind these issues. I'm not suggesting that everybody's going to give up drinking altogether. I'm not a monster. But what I would suggest is that we develop a healthier relationship with alcohol, one where we can drink less, think more clearly, and feel better. So I'd like to do this from the perspective of somebody affected by alcohol and trauma. And although this story is fictitious, I like to think that it is also very relatable also. So I'd like you to meet Jack. He's a young lad from Glasgow in his final year at university. He works very hard, and he also likes to play hard. This means nights out during the middle of the week, house parties on a Friday, football and pints on a Saturday, obviously, and Sunday socials with his societies. He describes himself as a social drinker, and that is very true. But he also does drink quite a lot. This can include drinking uh, multiple nights in a row, binge drinking, and maybe after one too many, feeling a little ill the next day. But beside the odds hangover, it doesn't really cause him any problems. Jack does not believe that he has an alcohol problem, and I think he's correct. See, a problem isn't just defined by how much you drink, but rather by how you think. Feeling the compulsion to drink after a stressful event, or feeling unable to stop drinking once you begin, feelings of regret and remorse after a healthy session, these kind of thoughts accompanied with heavy drinking, that's what points somebody towards a problem. Though Jack certainly does drink a lot, this isn't necessarily a problem. This all changed, however, after a personal tragedy. Whilst visiting home, Jack unfortunately witnessed his mum pass away suddenly and unexpectedly. I think you can all imagine this is a terrible occurrence, and it was during this time Jack found it difficult to cope, and his relationship to alcohol changed. He found that he could go out with his mates and get distracted by for a while if he got really drunk. And this was a, a crutch to Jack, really. This made being sober all the more difficult for him to experience. Think about it. He's constantly reminded about the passing of his mum, and he thinks alcohol is the only way that it can help him forget, even if just for a little while. This can make you feel very tense over time, as you can imagine. He's worried about something similar happening again, and he can't bear the thought of remembering. He's going to get very upset over time, and this is causing him to drink more frequently and to greater excess. Now, obviously, these don't sound like very good ideas, but bear in mind, Jack thinks this is the only thing that's going to help him, to help him forget to help take the pain away. So I'd like to make the point also that it is not just about how you drink, but more importantly, about how you think. A poor memory for a traumatic event, that can lead to our minds trying to fill in the gaps with uh, very distressing images. We call them intrusive memories and flashbacks. These are very reminiscent of the original trauma, like Jack noticing somebody with a passing resemblance to his mum. And over time, these become very overgeneralized and make it easier to trigger these fearful and distressful responses. This has a knock-on effect, too. Jack can become hypervigilant and more on edge more of the time, as well as being very avoidant and withdrawing from his social circles. With all of this, alcohol exacerbates each of these symptoms, but it's also pushing people towards seeking the comfort of drink. Put simply, the reasons why Jack is drinking, to help him forget, to help calm his nerves, Alcohol is just going to make that even worse. Alcohol and trauma do not mix well together. People who do drink more after a traumatic event, they are far more likely to go on to develop mental health problems compared to people who don't. And these problems are even more difficult to treat. It's after several months that we're finding Jack at his lowest point. He feels that he has to drink in the morning to help him get up. And then once he starts, he's unable to stop. He stopped attending his lectures. He's not going out with his mates. Social situations are really difficult for him now, and he compensates by staying at home and drinking. It's when he's drinking more that he's feeling more upset, and at his very worst, he drinks till he's blackout drunk. It's at this point that Jack has begun to self-harm, and now he's seeing doctors for the first time, talking about his problems and what he can do about them. The doctors diagnose him with post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, 
comorbid with an alcohol use disorder, or a drinking problem more commonly. They suggest that he takes a course of therapy to help deal with the trauma, but this will only begin after a long waiting period, along with a very intense high course of medications. So the doctors are doing absolutely everything they can to help him, and this is very important to remember, but their approach does come with some issues. If Jack's given medications to help him sober up, that's great, it's going to stop his symptoms from exacerbating, but they don't treat the root causes of his problems, how he's dealing with the loss of his mum, his social isolation, and his fearful responses. Equally, therapy is a great idea. It will help him process trauma over time, but this is a very long and difficult procedure. It's so much quicker and easier for Jack to drink, and whilst that providing temporary relief, it makes his problems that much worse. Bear in mind, too, what a critical situation he finds himself in. He's desperately unhappy, he's unable to function on his own, and he's just begun to self-harm. It could get a lot worse, really. Even if medications and therapy were available together at the same time, this is a very difficult thing to undertake, and perhaps too difficult for Jack to cope with. A lot of people with these comorbid problems are unable to follow the course of treatment. They're very likely to relapse, and the effects of the treatment are often quite modest. Jack's in a very vicious cycle now, and although he is getting some help, that help might not be enough. So the solutions, unfortunately, are hard to come by, but the problem's very well known, I think you would agree. Although Jack might not feel like it, he as a person is definitely not the problem here. I don't think any of us could blame him for seeking a drink after losing his mum so suddenly at such a young age. It's clear to see also that we can't help him seek the comfort of alcohol with the lack of social support too, or perhaps he doesn't really understand what drink might be doing over this time. It's not the doctor's fault either. Jack is in a critical situation, and they're just doing everything they can to help him. Though he might not feel like it, he is not the problem. But he might not understand it either. He didn't have a problem before, and now people are taking exceptions to his behaviour and his heavy drinking. And this is the point I'm getting to. Jack alone isn't the problem. He may not even have the problem. We have a problem. I'd go as far as to say that we may be the problem. We have to acknowledge, be it as a city, as a country, as a whole society, that together we all have a problem with alcohol. Fair enough, we might not be experiencing the consequences of a drinking problem for ourselves, but we're letting vulnerable people down by letting them shoulder the burden of these issues by themselves. And when they do seek help from us, we back away and dismiss them as alkies or jakies. It wasn't a choice for Jack. He didn't wake up one day and decide to develop a problem. It happened over many months in the absence of alternatives. He was seeking the help of his mates in the beginning, but this were all in environments around drinking. He could go and talk about it down the pub with his mates under the influence of alcohol. It just encouraged him to seek that drink whenever he felt bad and just get gradually worse over time. It was over these months that he did become reclusive and back away, and it's too late to really help him now. So I understand that this is a very difficult thing to talk about, and nobody wants to discuss trauma, be it sober or drunk. But we have to realise that it's far, far harder to watch Jack to get to such a difficult period for his life on his own, picking up the pieces. Therefore, when Jack isn't the problem, and the doctors are doing everything that they can, it's up to us as the community, as the only force powerful and responsible enough to really help people. This shouldn't be too hard on our part either. There's a few easy things that we can do. And whilst they might sound simple, they're going to help somebody on their own just cope that much more effectively. This is very much in our interest too, not just because the problems are so common or that the cost to life is so great. How we deal with people and how we help them is a reflection of ourselves. Everybody's going to experience trauma at some point in their lives, and absolutely anybody can develop an addiction in the worst circumstances. We stand such a greater chance of helping each other and helping ourselves so as we make sure that we're helping each other whilst we help ourselves. So game on. What can we do about this? Well, for starters, I think we just need to talk more openly about it and lend a helpful ear to people coping with these problems before they become too difficult to treat. Now, this is no substitute for formal therapy or counselling or any doctor's orders, but it's going to help break that cycle of loneliness that people experience that preys on their symptoms and their drinking. It does require effort on our part. Jack might not really understand his thoughts and feelings until he's listened to for the first time, and that's the kind of support that alcohols are never going to be able to give. People who receive more social support following a traumatic event are much less likely to develop an addiction following the trauma, 
And this in turn, this is related with much better symptoms. I'm not saying that people will stop drinking, but we're identifying these issues early before they snowball into something much worse. Again, we also need to look at our own relationship, our collective problem. Jack was seeking support initially, but this is a difficult thing to do when it's all centered around drinking. It influenced his relationship with alcohol and pushed him towards this. We need to make it much easier for people to seek support without the pressure to drink. And there's already great examples of this in Glasgow. From nights out to watching the Champions League's final, we can all find this kind of support without that pressure and yet reap the benefits. Remember, we might not be having problems for ourselves, but our relationship with alcohol might be having an influence on someone more vulnerable and push them down the wrong direction. It's up to us, therefore, to help craft a more a tolerant environment for people where they can seek help without the pressure to drink and therefore is a more alternative, uh, just a fair option overall. Finally, if we are serious about helping people and doing so before the problems become too bad to help, we need to alter our expectations of what people are going to get out of treatment. No matter how hard Jack's going to work or how good his intentions are, statistically speaking, he's going to relapse at some point. A traumatic event can stay with you forever, for the rest of your life, certainly, and take years to fully process. In this time, it's very easy to become depressed and anxious, so many different reasons to turn towards drink again. It shouldn't be a failure if Jack is unable to quit drinking. Rather, we need to think of more creative goals for him, something that he can achieve to help him cope in the long years ahead, where he can really reap the benefits. I'll say it again if you didn't hear. It's not just about your drinking. It's so much more to do with your thinking. If we can focus on how Jack thinks about alcohol and his relationship with his mental health, that's going to help him cope much more effective, effectively in the years to come. He deserves help and respect regardless of whether he's drinking. Not because it's the right thing to do, but because it's going to help him that much more effectively. Putting him on a pedestal and expecting to make a sudden recovery, that's unrealistic. It's also very reckless. It puts him in a vulnerable position to fail again. And we don't want to see that. We need to help him, no matter what situation he's in. So I'll wrap up now. I think I've made it very clear it's easy to develop a drinking problem, particularly after a traumatic event, but it is so much more difficult to treat. There's many different aspects to this relationship, like genetics and neurochemistry, but what can we do about that as a community? Not a great deal. We can unfold the good together by focusing on people's psychology, how they think. We can help better understand why people might be drinking and intervene early enough to provide that non-judgmental support in an environment without the pressure to drink. Jack was incredibly misfortunate to experience such a traumatic event. But bearing in mind his drinking was pretty normal before that. This could happen to absolutely anybody. But with the help of everybody, we can make this so much more easier to stop and to help people more effectively. If you take just one thing from a talk today, I'd like you to reflect on your own relationship with alcohol. It may not be bad, but I want you to think about how that could vary for somebody in a more vulnerable position and how you might be able to help them. So long as we're doing that, that we're talking with each other and helping each other out, we can make sure that when we do go out and have fun, and I really hope that you do, that not one person is drinking to regret. Cheers.